This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. For the better part of a year now, I've been taking notes solely on my iPad. For me, it's been one of the reasons I use it every day. It's a genuinely great place to keep track of my work, thoughts, to-dos and video ideas. But honestly, finding a decent note-taking app is a much harder task than you might think. There's so many to choose from, some are free, some are paid for, and sifting through the feature differences between them can be a really confusing mess. So over the past few months, I've been trying out a selection of the best note-taking apps for the iPad, and in this video, I'm going to compare and contrast them. And finally, I'll tell you which one slowly rose to become my favorite of them all. So hit that subscribe button if you like aesthetic -y tech and iPad content, and we'll get into it. Everyone has different needs when it comes to a note-taking app. So it's important to remember, I might not end up picking the most fully featured app out there, and I certainly didn't test every single one. There's so many, so I'll mainly be looking for one that suits me personally. Also, there's a few rules I'm setting out. Number one, each app must have Apple Pencil support, as that's how I personally take notes. Two, apps can't have paid for subscription models. For a note-taking app, I feel it's a little too much to ask, but I don't mind paying a little bit upfront for the app itself. And three, this isn't so much of a rule, but more of a bonus. If the app has a desktop app too, so I can access it from my computer or my MacBook, that's a huge plus in my book. Oh, and just to address the elephant in the room, at the time of filming, Notion doesn't actually support Apple Pencil natively. This pushes it out of the video. Sorry. Okay, let's start at the most basic of levels, Apple Notes, otherwise known as the default notes app on iPad. It's good. In fact, it's kind of great. And I think for a lot of people, the search for a notes app may well start and end here. Apple Notes is disguised as a simple note taker, but there's some great features built into it that really elevate the experience. I really like the handwriting to text function that was recently introduced through the Scribble update on iPadOS. Apple Pencil Smart Drawing is also really useful for tidying up your sketches. And there's loads of options for choosing paper type, sharing, privacy, and more in the options menu. Note organization is boiled down to note folders and that's about it. But the search function is pretty good at identifying handwriting if you're looking for something specific. You can open two instances of the app too, which is ideal if you need to copy and drag things between two separate notes. A feature which one-ups most other note takers out there though is Quick Note. If you've got an iPad Pro or a 2020 Model Air, you can simply grab the pencil and tap the screen once to start writing a note. It's really useful if you're in a pinch. The only thing I don't like about it is you can't have handwritten notes next to text-based ones. It forces you to have them as separate parts of each note, which is a bit of a shame. If you work solely in the Apple ecosystem, then all of these notes follow you around with the iCloud Sync, so you can access them on your Mac or on the iPhone app. But sadly, if you're on a PC, the only way to access your notes is by logging into the iCloud web app and using it there. And I've got to be honest, the experience isn't great. Overall though, it's an excellent note-taking app that's built right in and it has that magic price point of free. So I think for a lot of people, this is going to be enough for you. Next on the list is Google Keep. And Google Keep is uh, bad. Don't use Google Keep. Uh, jokes aside, there is Apple Pencil support, which is nice, and it's totally cross-platform, which I always appreciate, but it's clearly meant to be an ultra-simple note-taking and list-making app for mobile that's been adapted to iPad rather than built for it. You can tell because when you write notes, they appear fuzzy on the screen, and it just feels like there's so much wasted space within the app. Google Keep is great on phones for simple things. It's not on iPad, so this one is a big pass for me. Next up is a note-taking juggernaut, it's Microsoft OneNote. When I downloaded and started using this app, I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it. As great as Microsoft apps are, they have this sense of work that I just can't help but relate them to. But over time, I actually grew quite fond of OneNote. It's a very good note taker. Some of my favorite features are being able to zoom in and out really far on OneNote, which really gives you the sense of spreading out and extending your paper as much as you'd like. I found this to be super useful when you want to fit more onto a note, or if you want space to add in a huge image or draw something else out. Note organization goes a step further than Apple Notes too. You can have multiple notebooks, each with its own section or chapters within. I really like this feature. It helps keep track of things easier, and I missed it when I moved over to different note-taking apps. 
Also, a little thing that I really love is that if you handwrite a title of a note, it shows that as a title of the note on the left, which really helps the whole thing come together nicely. OneNote has the ability to record sounds too, which is useful, but you can't write at the same time, which is a really big shame. If you want to record a lecture while taking notes, then you're going to be a little stuck here. Cross-platform support is absolutely excellent though. There are fantastic apps for OneNote regardless if you're on a Mac, a PC, Android, iOS, and they're all fully featured and all of your notes back up to your Microsoft account, which is really ideal. And what's more, they're all free. OneNote is great. If you're a user of multiple operating systems and you're looking for a note-taking app that will never leave your side, OneNote is a champion for that. Before we carry on, I wanted to take note of today's sponsor, Squarespace. As a freelance content creator, having a well-tailored online presence to get hired has been a fundamental part of my business. I've actually been a user for Squarespace for my own website for about three years now, and I can tell you firsthand that having your own corner of the internet to show off your best work is absolutely essential. Squarespace makes it super easy to make a professional looking website in a few clicks. There's fantastic templates on offer for all forms of creative portfolios, e-commerce stores, and many others too. All the templates are designed thoughtfully with responsiveness in mind, and making your own changes to them is super simple. They even take care of opt optimizing it for mobile too. Instagram, Facebook, and other social platforms aren't always enough to present your work on your own terms. Having a website is the perfect way to show off who you are and what you can do. So make sure you head over to squarespace.com and try it free for 14 days. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code BITEREVIEW to get 10% off your first website or domain. And of course, a huge thanks goes out to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so moving on to another excellent note taker, it's GoodNotes 5. In my opinion, GoodNotes really succeeds by making its note taking experience feel like a real physical process, and I really like it for that. For example, you pick a notebook cover design when you make a new book, the standard orientation for swiping between notes is landscape, and each page has a defined start and end. It's all these little things which add up to that more realistic physical feeling you just don't get with the other apps. Its only downfall is it doesn't handle organization overly well compared to the other apps out there. You can't have sections within notebooks, which can make sorting through your notes a little more tricky. There are bookmarks which you can use to quickly jump to pages, but I'm not overly keen on the implementation of it. I wish it had chapters or sections like OneNote. Also, there's no audio recording function, which I think is a massive shame for the students out there. Conversely, there are some awesome features. You can open up two instances of the app and have notes open side by side. There's tab browsing if you have more than one notebook open at once. You can convert handwritten notes to text, and the array of smart drawing tools are excellent. I've also found GoodNotes to be one of the best when it comes to marking up PDFs as well. It just seems to handle them better than any other app. I'm also a huge fan of being able to use the search bar to find handwriting too, which is just so useful. If you're a messy note taker like I am, you might really enjoy this app. I usually find I don't need my notes other than the day I write them, so GoodNotes works well for me. It's a paid app, but unlike some out there, once you've paid, that's it. There's no hidden costs lurking around the corner for extra features. There's a Mac app as well, which is really nice, but sadly no app for Windows. The Mac app pretty much mirrors the iOS one, which is great. However, I do wish it adapted itself a little better for type notes while it's being used on a desktop, but I'm still happy they've even got one. Overall, the experience of GoodNotes has been really fantastic and it quickly became one of my favorite apps amongst all the ones that I had tested. If you've been taking notes on iPads at any point, you'll no doubt have heard of Notability. It's been featured so many times and in so many places, and it's easily one of the most popular paid for note taking apps on the App Store. This might sound like a strange thing to notice off the bat, but Notability really nails the feeling of writing better than any other app I've tried. The tuning with the Apple Pencil is wonderful. Everything here feels ultra responsive and just perfect. It's really good stuff, and if you use an Apple Pencil to take notes mainly, as I do, I think you'll definitely notice too. 
The layout and organization of notes here is a little easier to get to grips with than good notes in my opinion. You select a notebook, then a topic or chapter, and you can add as many pages to that note as you'd like. It's also got an infinite scroll sort of feature, which I really like too. There's also a voice recorder, so if you need to record a lecture or a class, you can do that too while you're still taking notes. Notability also takes that a step further. If you play back the recording, it will show you the notes you took while you were recording so you can see exactly what you were thinking and writing at the time, which is just so awesome. There's also handwriting to text conversion too, which is great. There's a few things I don't like about Notability though. With the highest price tag out there of the ones I've tested, Notability also has a store to buy extras. I don't mind this for new designs and notepads because they're superficial at the end of the day, but locking technology like math equations behind a paywall is just a shame to see. I know it's a very niche thing to complain about, but it's here and I'm just not a fan of it. You also can't open up two instances of the app, however you can view notes side by side within the app which does alleviate that. Notability has a Mac app which is great and it's very similar in vain to the GoodNotes one, mirroring the iOS app pretty much identically. However, it does adapt itself a little better to type notes while it's on desktop in my opinion, which is great. Overall, Notability is certainly the most feature packed of all the note takers I've tested and I really do think the Apple Pencil tuning is bang on. This is a great app and I can see why it's been at the forefront for taking notes on the iPad for so long. Okay, so with all that testing out the way and using each app for a couple weeks at least, I think I have a pretty good conclusion to this overall test, but please do bear in mind the rules and biases I made at the start of this video. So without copying out, I'm actually going to crown two apps the winners here, but I think you'll understand why, so here goes. Winner number one is OneNote. Yep. What started out as an app I thought I wouldn't enjoy turned out to be a fantastic way to take notes across all of your devices. And best of all, it hits that unbeatable price of free. OneNote rose to the top of my estimations after about two weeks of using it as my main note taker. As someone who switches between a Windows PC, MacBook Pro, iPad, iPhone, and occasionally Android devices, it was nice to know that regardless of what I was using, OneNote would always be there for me with my notes ready to go. If you don't like the idea of paying for an app and switch devices a lot, then OneNote is so easy to recommend. It's a great note taker that won't let you down. But my overall winner and the app that I kept coming back to over and over and over again after all of my testing was GoodNotes 5. Maybe it's the fact that I like how it's designed combined with its unbeatable physicality, but GoodNotes 5 managed to hold on to me like no other note taker on this list. I will admit though, it only just beat out Notability, which is equally fantastic, and perhaps in some way it's a better app for students and people who just need more features from their note taker. GoodNotes isn't perfect. I wish you could add sections or chapters to notebooks and make individual pages on each book never ending like in other apps, but GoodNotes replaces a real notebook the best, and really, that's all I need from a note taking app. So that rounds off this note taking odyssey I've been on lately. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was worth the wait and I really hope it made some of your decisions easier. If it did, then become part of the 8% and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot more than you think it does and it keeps me making videos like this one. As ever though, I always love to hear from you guys. So if you think I've missed a fantastic note taking app or if you have any advice for others, then leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It'd be great if you could pop a like on the way out too, that really would be massive and I will see you all in the next one.